It's been a wild offseason for the two-tone blue. From free agency to the NFL draft, and we've got it all covered here. He's just like, if you keep playing with that ball, it's going to be, you know, that's going to be your job one day. Mike Keith shows off the new and improved St. Thomas Sports Park with first-round draft pick wide receiver Traylon Burks. The Tennessee Titans select Malik Willis, quarterback, Liberty. John Robinson is here to break down the 2022 draft class. And we'll also check in with Mike Vrabel as his family enjoys a big spring. Can you believe it? Titans All Access is celebrating its 20th season in 2022, and it starts right now. Derrick Henry, the stiff arm, throws a man down. Get you some. Sack! Harold Landry. Touchdown, Titans. How about a little finger roll? Throws back shoulder, intercepted fire. Throws ball up in the air, intercepted fire. This is the BetMGM studio. Welcome to year 20 of Titans All Access with General Manager John Robinson. I'm Mike Keith. So glad to have you with us for what is a packed show. But the bottom line is the 2022 NFL Draft is in the books. Nine players selected, six on offense. John, let's talk skill people on offense. Your first round pick, wide receiver Traylon Burks from Arkansas. Yeah, played in the tough conference in the SEC. He's got excellent size, excellent speed, big catch radius, really good with the ball in his hands. You know, made a lot of big plays down the field for Arkansas and excited about having him. Next up, the guy you took in the third round, quarterback Malik Willis, Liberty. Yeah, a big arm, a lot of arm talent, can make a lot of the off-schedule throws. Offensively, he's got some transitioning to do with more of a conventional style offense from, from, from what he ran in college, but you know, just really like the upside of the player. Michigan running back, Hassan Haskins. Big, strong, tough, physical, you know, kind of Big Ten football when it's cold, when it's snowing. They handed the ball to this guy, and, and he ran over people, ran through people. Stylistically, just plays the game the way we want to play it. Maryland tight end Chig Akonkwo. Yeah, a ton of upside. Spent some time with him out at the East-West Shrine game. Got to know him. Great guy, fast, athletic, really that F-type tight end, if you will. But he's competitive as a blocker at the point of attack, and he plays in the kicking game. UCLA wide receiver Kyle Phillips. Gets open and catches. Had an outstanding career at UCLA in the slot. Has a great blocker, which is you know something those slots have to do. And helps in the return game as a punt returner. Moving to defense in the second round, you took Auburn cornerback Roger McCrary. Covers his guy. You know, again, SEC, great conference. Played against a lot of good receivers. You know, whether it's LSU, Alabama, Arkansas, Georgia, I mean, he had to cover them every week and say more times than not, he didn't let his guy catch the ball. Just a great guy, too. A story of day three for the Titans. You take a guy who played high school football in Nashville at Overton, played at the University of Tennessee, defensive back Theo Jackson. What did you like about Theo? Yeah, I thought Tennessee did a great job with him this year, kind of playing him down around the line of scrimmage. He played some nickel, he played some big safety. You could see him play back off the hash, but had outstanding measurables. He ran fast and was a productive, instinctive defensive player. Should carve out a role in the kicking game and, and somewhere on defense. Draft weekend concluded with something very special. You and your wife, Jamie, hosting the JDRF Gala, raising nearly $3 million. Your daughter, Taylor, provided the night's keynote address and absolutely tore the house down. Just two years after being diagnosed with type 1, I was diagnosed with alopecia, which obviously is a hair loss disease. What an event to wrap up a busy three days for you. Yeah, it was. When I first got there and sat down, you know, the brain was still going from the draft, so it took a little bit to unplug, but I was a proud dad watching Taylor up there address the crowd. and and kind of chronicle what she's gone through in her life with, with her autoimmune diseases. I've watched my family deal with this disease. I think about the worry it has caused my parents. I think about the fear they have for me on a daily basis. And then just super blessed and excited about, you know, the generosity of everyone there to raise that much money to try to help find a cure. Good work. Thanks, Mike. All right, when we come back, we're going to have a chance to visit with Traylon Burks as I get to do a little walk and talk around St. Thomas Sports Park. But as we go to break, let's take a long look at the 2022 Titans schedule.
Tennessee Titans select Traylon Burks. I'm ready to play ball, <laughs> honestly. It's good to find my place and get back into that group. So you grew up in the South, you're gonna play your pro football in the South. When everybody sees your name, they think it's Traylon right. because we're in the South. Right, right. But let's be clear right off the bat, Traylon. Traylon. Traylon is your preference. Do you have a reason that is your preference? No, sir. That's just how it's always been pronounced from my great grandparents. All my family's always called me Traylon. So growing up here in Traylon, that's what I know Traylon. You were here in this facility for a pre-draft visit what was your memory of coming here then as you walk back through the doors now? Really just been impressed by the facilities and how the coaches were when I got to meet them one on one and just really figuring out who they were. And, you know, that really made a big impact on me just because like sitting down with a person, you actually figure out who exactly that person is instead of at, at the combine. It's 20 different people in there and you just don't know what to expect. So I said it made a big impression on me. Who is the person in your circle, family or friends, that you think is the most excited about you being drafted, being a Tennessee Titan? I had to give it to people. My fiance and my great grandmother, you know, they both has had a big impact on me, especially uh, my great grandmother, just from growing up with her and how she, you know, pushed me every day and, you know, just stayed on me. And then also my fiance, because she, you know, stuck with me through everything and, you know, can't be more happy. Get emotional. Oh yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that's okay. Tell everybody who Joe Burks is. That's me. <laughs> Joe Burks is me. That was my great grandfather. Passed away eight years ago, but he is the person that made me who I am. I want to be just like him. Go about my business just like he did, and just to, you know wear his chain that he wore and be able to do what I'm doing. I know he's extremely proud of. Me. What would he say? I told you it was gonna happen. Exactly. Did he tell you? Yes, sir. 100%. When did he tell you? When I was actually 12 years old. Um, I was outside playing ball, me and my cousin, and he was just like, you keep playing with that ball, it's going to be, you know, that's going to be your job one day. And I looked at him and I was just like, what's he talking about? And when I was about 19, playing at Arkansas, I realized that, you know, he knew exactly what he was talking about. And, you know, I just... Keep, keep doing exactly what I'm doing and making him proud, so. You've always been doing sort of crazy things throughout your athletic career. What's the thing you've had to work hardest at due to the fact that a lot of things came naturally? I would just say being consistent, just making sure I'm staying at it, not getting complacent with anything. And, you know, just being myself, that's my main goal. Just keep being myself and everything will be all right. And now you're in an NFL locker room. You're gonna have one of these sweet lockers. I know you had nice lockers at Arkansas, but this is an exclusive club to play in the greatest sports league in the world yes, at the top level. Yes, Does it sink in? And I would say it hadn't sank in yet, but I know for sure it is gone. The official Titans podcast, better known as the OTP, hit the road in early April to build up excitement for the 2022 NFL Draft. The OTP Live Tour featured stops in six cities across Tennessee and Kentucky and gave the OT people a chance to listen to Mike Keith, Amy Wells, and Titans Radio's draft duo, Coach Mac, and me, Rhett Bryan, in person. The OTP, presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans, is in its fifth season and available for download wherever you get your podcasts. So rate, review, subscribe, and tighten up. Say my name. Landry sees the Titans coming after him. Hit sack! It's Harold Landry. Feeling some heat. Hit sack! Harold Landry. Say my name. It's Harold Landry. Hit sack! It's Harold Landry who has it. Oh my goodness! A wave of navy blue. Was it Landry? He got sack! it. In trouble. Sack! Yes! Harold Landry! Are you ready?
The name of this place is the Bet MGM Studios as Titans All Access continues. Titans priorities in free agency. Well, there were a lot, but the main one is keep our guys. And that's why the Titans made it a priority to re-sign outside linebacker Harold Landry, getting a deal done with number 58 on March the 8th. After he signed that big new contract and stayed a Titan, Harold Landry visited with our Amy Wells. Shane Bowen is someone that you have a relationship with beyond just being your defensive coordinator. He was also your position coach. How does that impact the way that you guys are able to game plan on a week-to-week -week basis? Oh uh, yeah, no, I just feel like, uh, like you said, you know, Shane, uh, was my position coach when I first got here. You know, he played a huge role um, in my development over the years here. Um, I feel like, you know, we've developed that, that trust in our relationship. And, and I don't know, I feel like, you know, when they're game planning as a defensive staff, I feel like they have a, a great understanding of, this, of the strengths um, and the skill set of, you know, each player on defense. Um, and they do a great job of putting all of us in positions to succeed and positions that um, fit our skill set so that we can go out there and be successful as a, as a unit. Is that rare to have coaches that really hone in on each individual player's strengths? I mean, you would think that some coaches really value the, the group as a whole or the, the scheme that they're trying to do or what they're really focused on seeing X's and O's wise. It right. seems like this coaching staff, especially on the defensive side of the ball, really keys in on the players. Ray's probably said this before, but it's not so much the X's and the O's as it is the Jimmys and the Joes that are out there on the field. You know, Braves always preaches this about the players, the players making plays. Um, but yeah, no, it's like, it works hand in hand, you know. Um, they do a great job, like I said, of putting us in positions to be successful, and then it just comes down to players making plays. And you know, I feel like we got so many playmakers on our defense um, that one of us is bound to make a play, you know, play in and play out. It feels like every year since Mike Vrabel has been a part of this franchise, we've seen the team as a whole build on the success from the previous year. Is that part of the culture of this team is continuing to build on the foundation that's been laid? And that's another, like, I just feel like we all kind of like think alike, like nobody here is like ever content, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we were the one seed, yeah, we lost in the playoffs, but you know, we were the one seed, you know, we had a lot of success this year, but we're never satisfied. I feel like we, there's always meat on the bone, there's always room to improve. And I just feel like that's gonna be our approach uh, this off season is, you know, like for me personally, is find that one or two things that can take your game to the next level while also keep enhancing what you already do well, um, but really focusing on that this off season. Um, but yeah, no, I feel like nobody is ever content. We all have one goal, which is to go and win the Super Bowl. And we all know that, you know, we have the team to do it. Like, there's no question about it. We have the team, we have the culture, the work ethic, the coaches, the front office, everybody. Um, we just got to find a way to string it together. Those guys are our family at this point. Was that a reason that you wanted to stay, keep the family together? Like, yeah, I had uh, 12 sacks. I had this, I had that, you know, now I'll be making this money and that. But I'd be telling people all the time, like, when I'm all done playing the game, like, the stuff that's, like, going to mean the most to me and the stuff that I'm going to miss the most is, like, us in the locker room joking around, uh, talking to one another and just having a good time together. And that's definitely, like I said, one of the main reasons why I wanted to come back. NFL Coach of the Year Mike Vrabel has had a busy spring getting ready for the draft and now into the offseason program and headed toward training camp in a few weeks. He and his wife, Jen, have also had a busy spring with their two sons. The younger, Carter, is playing baseball at Ball State Community College in Gallatin, playing third base. Carter leads the team in home runs and is second in runs batted in. Older son, Tyler, finished his career as an offensive lineman at Boston College and he has signed a free agent contract with the Atlanta Falcons to play for our old friend, Arthur Smith. So congratulations to all of the Vrabels. By the way, if you're wondering where my partner Amy Wells is, well, there's a good reason she's absent. We'll cover that later and a lot more as Titans All Access continues. Welcome back to Titans All Access. Ever since the team moved here in the late 1990s, the Titans organization has wanted to make a positive impact in the community. And already in 2022, the Tennessee Titans community relations team and staff members throughout the organization have tried to live up to that promise. 
As part of its youth football initiative, the Tennessee Titans launched a girls flag football league with Williamson County Sports and the TSSAA. I was so impressed with the athleticism of all these girls. There's going to be some really good games this year. This sport is being played at the NAIA level, at the collegiate level, in the National Junior College Athletic Association. Now some of these college programs are starting to come on board, and there's going to be opportunities for these girls to play post-secondary when they get out of high school. The pilot program featured a six-week, eight-game season with all nine teams competing for the championship at Nissan Stadium in May. The Tennessee Titans once again partnered with the Rally Foundation for Childhood Cancer Research by taking part in the annual Rally on the Runway event in downtown Nashville. They are escorted by our great Tennessee Titans who have the biggest hearts and they make these kids nights. You know, just a blessing to be able to be a part of it. You know, I, just sitting up there talking to Raleigh, um, you know, just to hear what she had been through. You know, she said, you're going to hear my uh, story later. She said she's a songwriter, she wanted to be a model. You know, I, I have a lot of younger siblings and, um, you know, kind of hanging around young kids and, and um, playing games with them, dancing with them and all that, all that type of stuff. It's, that's by far my favorite. The night included a live auction and fashion show that featured a handful of Titans players walking with kids who have survived cancer. I would do this every day if I could. It's bigger than football. It's bigger than, you know, just uh, going out there on the field, you know, putting shoulder pads and helping on. Just God coming in here, showing their true character. Today is the Music City Blitz presented by the Tennessee Titans. It's an adult flag football tournament a fundraising event for Special Olympics Tennessee. Uh, it's a dream come true. Uh, as the athletes ran through the tunnel today, through the smoke, we got to experience what it's like to be a professional player, energy, the atmosphere, and then to be on the field with Coach Rabel and other former players, it's incredible. Uh, it's just something you can't get anywhere else and uh, just a wonderful experience for everybody involved. This is where the big boys play at. Who wouldn't want to be out here? Nice, lovely field. I thought it was carpet when I first got out here, but uh, really a beautiful day. Being out here when it's sunny and beautiful, watching our athletes on the, on the big screen, on the Jumbotron, and hearing their names called out as they run through the tunnel is something that they'll remember forever. How awesome was that? Speaking of awesome, the Titans just a few days ago held their inaugural Titans Foundation dinner hosted by John Robinson and Mike Vrabel, and it was big time. More to come. Titans All Access continues. If you thought the first edition of Titans All Access and its 20th anniversary year was missing something, you're 100% correct. Amy Wells is not here. But she's not skipping out on work. No, she has a good excuse. Here's why. Amy Wells loves to be on the move, especially when she is doing anything related to football. So when she found out she was pregnant late last summer, she heard a familiar refrain. You will have to slow down. I can't share exactly how she responded to such advice, but suffice it to say that Amy made clear she disagreed. And she proved it. Not missing a snap of football, whether it was home or away, hot or cold, or windy or rainy. She didn't even miss a Titans practice. And she didn't miss a radio or TV show. And once the season ended, Amy kept going to the Pro Bowl to the Combine, to the University of Cincinnati's Pro Day, to the NFL owners' meetings, and on the OTP Live Tour for all six days. Amy did her player interviews, taped all of her podcasts, and attended every press conference. Tough and dependable like a John Robinson, Mike Vrabel player, that is Amy Wells for our broadcasting department. But now, she's something even more special, a mom. Six days before the draft, Amy and her husband Josh 
welcome the greatest baby to be named later. This is Olivia Lane Corey, a beautiful girl who adds something very special to the Titans family. It took a day to pick out Livy's name, but like her, it was worth the wait. Now we will have to wait on Amy Wells' return as she takes a little more time to simply be a mom. But slow down, not love football anymore, no chance. As her 10th season with the Titans promises to be Amy's most special for obvious reasons. Before we go, want to give you a look at the inaugural Titans Foundation dinner hosted by John Robinson and Mike Vrabel. Not only did Titans fans hear from the GM and the head coach, but you got to meet the 2022 draft class. There were special guests. There were current Titans. There were former Titans. There was a big auction. As a matter of fact, when it was all said and done, it's the biggest fundraiser ever for the Titans Foundation. And that's just in year one. Thanks for your support. Thanks to the sold out crowd. It was a great night at Nissan Stadium. A lot more to come in this offseason. For our outstanding staff, I'm Mike Keith, thanking you for joining us for Titans All Access.